what, what the mate is talking about. Yeah. What's up, family? For some reason, Candace Owens, the coconut jigaboo, thought it was important that she let the world know that George Floyd was not only not an amazing person, but he was a criminal. According to Candace, George Floyd deserves no support because he had a criminal record. She cited a number of arrests and prison stints. And based on that, she said that she was not in support of George Floyd. Now, she also said that she doesn't support the officer. She started off, because this is how, oh, you got to pay attention to this family. This is how the, the jigaboos, the tap dancers, this is how they get down. They start with a truth or two, right? And then they go in on some straight up asinine BS. The reason they start with the truth or two, because see that truth or two is one of those things that there's a general consensus of. And so it makes a lot of sense and people say, oh, okay, Smart, okay, that's, that makes sense. Okay, I agree, I agree. Every, it's like almost like universally people agree, right? And then that's when, she, that's when they go in to start splitting. That's when they start throwing the black community under the bus after they get that point out of the way. What did she say? She said that the officer who uh, murdered George Floyd uh, deserved to be arrested. She said that it was an evil act. And then she said that there are no white people, with, this part is a lie, but you know, it's subjective to some of you who uh, hold out hope. She said that there are no white people in this country that believes that Officer Derek Chauvin is innocent, is a good person. They all believe he's the devil. Well, he at least did a devilish act. And we know that's a lie. But, you know, that's the setup. That's the setup. That is the setup. Yes. That was wrong what he did. He was wrong. Bad, bad, bad. Bad, 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 Derek. Then she go in top heavy on criticizing whoever or whatever her black target is, in this case, George Floyd. She spent about one minute, one or two minute, minutes denouncing the officers and setting it up. But actually, she didn't spend two minutes. She spent more like a few seconds denouncing the officer. But the other part of it was setting it up, you know, making it pretty. And then she went top heavy on the criticism. This is what they all do. Follow Charles Barkley. Watch me. Follow Charles Barkley. Follow the Jason Whitlocks, even though he's been fired from Fox. He'll probably return somewhere else uh, under some rock. He'll crawl from under. Uh, the Stephen A's, the, all of these people, these black people who they use to chime in on black issues to serve as a representative for the black community. Watch them. It is a common theme. It's like they all read from the same book, from the same playbook. So she spent like the next 17 minutes or so just going in on George Floyd like he's nothing, like he was a criminal and he pulled guns on people. He did drugs. On and on and on. He's not a martyr. He's not a martyr. He's not an amazing person like she is an amazing person. I mean, this chick is despicable. I can't wait 
I can't wait till she get that moment. Because it's coming. You know, it always comes for all of them. That's the thing about it. The, the sellout, the, the jigaboo, the tap dance, and the sambo lifestyle, you know, it's good for those who have no moral compass, no integrity. So it pays well, but there's no retirement plan. The retirement plan sucks because after white supremacy gets through using them, it always kicks them to the curb. White supremacy always discards its tools. So at some point, she's going to be done just like Stacey Dash and Omarosa. And where do they go? Run their ass right to the black community. And what do many of you do? Accept their clown asses. That's what y'all do. I don't understand it. Like, I don't want to talk to them. I wouldn't invite them to any panel discussions. I wouldn't invite them to any summits. I don't want to hear what they have to say. You may as well be listening to a white supremacist. And it ain't got nothing to do with having independent thoughts and all this stuff. These people are moles. They're plants. They are there to cause disruption and division between black folks who are on the move, who are progressive. They're there to run interference. That's it. They're not there for constructive criticism or to, to build, to move the culture forward. They're not there for those purposes. They are moles. This woman, just a few years ago, when she was in, I believe, college, her and her family sued for racial discrimination, sued the school because she was being harassed by some of her schoolmates, her white schoolmates. Uh, shortly after that, she had a website, a progressive website that was struggling. The conservatives, they saw that she had some talent in voicing her opinion. And you know she was a liberal. She was voice, voicing liberal opinions. They saw that. They recognized that she had a talent for that. And they recruited her. The moment they recruited her, racism just disappeared. She stopped talking about how certain things are racist and we're living in a society, double standards and this. All of that disappeared. From that point on, she was like, yeah, it's bad. See, that's what that's, what, that's one of the things they do. They say, yeah, it's bad, and we know it's bad. But what about when we do this? And what about that? And you still have an opportunity just like everybody else. And that's the thing that those racists want to hear. They want to make sure, or be, they want to be reassured that the dirt that they're doing, the, the complicity that they're involved in, that they don't feel bad about it. They don't feel guilty and they're not held accountable for it. So she makes them feel good, but she also reinforces their racist behavior. She reinforces their complicity and in injustice. And that is why Candace Owens chimed in on the George Floyd murder. She said she didn't want to do it at first, you know, because she felt pressured to just go along to get along. But it was on our heart to speak on it. No, fool, it was on your bank account to speak on it. It was on your agenda to throw black folks under the bus. You was just trying to find the angle and the right time to do it. So finally, oh, and then she said, well, you know, as soon as I saw this, I started Digging. I started going into his background. I started researching like she's a hell of a research. Like that's what she do. I started researching like, she, like and, and it's right there. It's easy to find. It was easy to find. So if a person gets killed, this is the victim. Why would you immediately 
start going into the victim's background instead of the person who killed them background. I bet you a dollar to a donut and I called out on my IG page. I bet you that she won't go into detail about the grievances and the career uh, crimes of these officers, Chauvin and the rest of his goons. I bet she won't do that. You know why she won't do it? Because that's going to interrupt the bag. That's going to run interference with her bag. She can't do that. All of these people, they always have top heavy criticism, direct. She loves it in the black community, in the black community, the black. She loves it. And I'm being a black person. I can't do this. I'm black, the black. Black of that black, the black, 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 black. She loves to say that, right? Black community and the black. But she never criticizes the white community. She glosses over the white community's injustices or deficiencies and flaws. She glosses over it. She'll say, yeah, but yeah, yeah it exists. But she never say white people such and such or, you know, white people do this to black people. And what about white people's crimes and da, da da She don't say that. She'll just say, yes, it's hard out there. Yes, are there some people that's like that? Do some people act like that? Yes, yes, yes. You got to watch it. These are cold words. And you can watch, you can watch and listen. And you can tell what they're all about. I checked out the first time I heard her talking. I knew she was in pursuit of the bag. And I did my research and I found out, oh, okay, so she did. She does understand that racism is alive and well in America. It's just that since she got the bag, she can't talk about it. She can't speak on it since she got the bag. Oh, that's what it is. See, I figured it out easy. It's like very, very easy. So Candace Owens I would say that she should be ashamed of herself for speaking on George Floyd like that because his past crimes, whatever he did in the past, had nothing to do with him being murdered. That's why it's not even important to bring it up. We're talking about injustice. We're talking about a person who was murdered. And if you look in anybody's background, especially a person who's over 30, you are going to find some discrepancies in morality. I don't care who it is, including you, Candace Owens, the Mammy Mutt. That is going to be discrepancies. Nobody's perfect. So maybe your imperfect toleration is one mistake. Maybe somebody else's is two. Maybe somebody else's is three. Maybe somebody else believes you get to make as many mistakes in life as you do and the goal is to constantly at least try to improve yourself. People who have drug problems often go to jail many, many, many times. They often have many experiences with law enforcement. It is a tough monkey to shake. And it's one of those things that affects all of us all of our lives, all of us have family members who are addicted to drugs. Think about the one that you have, the closest one. You think it's cool for them to be murdered because they had drugs in their system? Come on, fam. I was going to say that she should be ashamed of herself, but she have no shame. Anytime you sell out your own people, you're useless. Candace on. Your mama should be embarrassed and your daddy should have pulled out. 
No more talk. What the haters talking about?